I'm actually so scared about all of these videos, dude, because I feel like this is going to be straight up like, like there's going to be TOS in this. You know what I mean? Anyway, I, I do want to see this. I do want to see why is Amnesty International being kind of fucking wild? This is actually surprising. I'm watching it right now. The check Amnesty International two has moments, dead bodies at 330 to 337, one dead body, then bloodied face. Still going through the rest. Thank you. The word apartheid, what do you think of? Probably the disturbing images of racial segregation between whites and blacks in South Africa, where a regime ruled by a racist white minority declared themselves officially superior to the black majority, then proceeded to dominate them. South Africa's apartheid system officially ended in the mid 1990s, but that doesn't mean apartheid. Yo, chat, can any of you could do me the favor of freeing Palestine? Cheers. No, sorry. Why is Israel in Africa at dude? No, they're starting off by talking about fucking apartheid and where the, where like there was a, uh, a, an apartheid state. So you understand what apartheid state is. Not a streamer, but can you add like a delay and a kill switch? No, I can't then I would not be able to have wonderful conversations with you guys. Okay? Apartheid can't happen elsewhere. Here, in Israel and the occupied Palestinian territories, Palestinians are being forced off their I land have to pee so bad. out of their I'll homes, be back. separated and segregated by laws, walls, and checkpoints. They live in a constant state of fear and insecurity, and deliberately impoverished. While, on the other hand, Israeli authorities have given the Jewish Israeli population privilege over Palestinians in just about every facet of life. The question is, does this all amount to the crime of apartheid? First, the definition of apartheid. The crime against humanity of apartheid is perpetrated when particular serious human rights violations are committed with the purpose of establishing and maintaining a system of domination by one racial group over another and systematically oppressing them. But does this system exist in Israel and the occupied Palestinian territories? And there's been a growing debate about whether the situation in Israel and the occupied Palestinian territories is apartheid. And now is the time for us as the world's largest human rights organization to offer up our analysis. Our findings and criticism are directed not at the Jewish people, but at the Israeli state. It's the Israeli state that put in place the policies that implement the laws and the practices that oppress Palestinians. Well, Israeli leaders have been clear about their intentions from the beginning. In 1948, just before he became the first Prime Minister of Israel, Ben Gurion visited Lifta and other Palestinian areas near Jerusalem that were completely emptied of Palestinian residents following attacks by Jewish forces. He stated, There are no Arabs, 100% Jews. If we persist, it is quite possible that in the next six or eight months there will be considerable changes in the country, very considerable, and to our advantage. More than 70 years later, then Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu posted on Instagram that Israel is not a state of all its citizens, but rather the nation state of the Jewish people and only them. I mean, that's like, like, what's up? That, that is literally just a theocratic apartheid state. That's what that is. Love you. That's crazy. Like, it, it's so strange, dude. It's so fucking strange that we have this this sort of attitude where it's like, no, it's, it's only, what, what are you, do you think it's only like something that uh, white people are capable of saying and doing? Like, what, what's up? You could just like say it out loud if you're, uh, if you're Jewish uh, and you are the prime minister of Israel. Like, it's, it's just a completely insane fucking thing that we avoid, okay? No, that's just a whites only thing, dude. Does the current Israeli government agree with this? Of course they do. What do you mean? Dude, the position... Listen, listen. Israel and America are, you know, obviously uh, uh, partnered up, okay? They have... They are completely aligned on, on their Middle Eastern policies and all that sort of stuff. But, like, the, the closest comparison that you can make is that the Israeli government across the board is is uh, reactionary and anti-palestinian in the same way that american uh, the american government is there's always bipartisan consensus in america when it comes to fucking blowing uh muslim countries up okay 
and extracting the natural resources of other uh, other nations there's always bipartisan support for for the american state department engaging in these sorts of actions there's always bipartisan support for uh the the department of defense engaging in these violent actions and there's always universal consensus in israel as well there are very few voices that uh stray away from that like so much so that we move on to uh i don't know like settlements settler terrorism is that acceptable is it not acceptable and that position has shifted rightwards as well that ratchet effect that we talk about here in the united states of america very much exists in israel in nearly the identical in the exact same capacity okay on twitter leftist politics what leftist politics are the key to winning elections that's why the most recent polling shows that if a candidate wins a majority in both houses and has a majority in the house of representatives wait what i'm so confused Hassle, hassle, There's a huge divide hassle. between American diaspora Jews and Israeli Jews. Huge increase in conservative liberal division. Um, yeah, I, I think so too. I, I think like the Israeli Jews have become more and more reactionary under the Bibi Netanyahu government. Uh, where uh, like there's still there's still resilience. There's still resistance uh, against it. But yes, uh, it, it certainly has gotten to a point where it certainly has gotten to a point where it's just you know. Yeah, I saw his logs. I, I got it. I think you have a surge of bots in chat today. There are a lot of new accounts just posting nonsense. What are they saying? I don't think so. Anyway, let's continue. So, it's no surprise that Israel built a system of racially discriminatory laws, policies, and practices that privilege only Jewish people. And Palestinians, well... This is a wild fucking video from Amnesty International UK because... Uh, it's like, this is, this is the type of shit that like, you can't show this in Germany. I don't think, I think this probably will not be shown in Germany. Like depending on, um, depending on who is doing like the testing on what is considered to be anti-Semitic, whatever organizations that people are using, like saying Israel is an apartheid state is to some degree by like the ADL and whatever. I think the ADL is, uh, 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 like some of the people that absolutely believe this, where they, they consider this to be anti-Semitic. You don't know what you're talking about? You can absolutely show this? Yeah, is that why the fucking German amnesty... Huh, that's interesting that you say that, because Amnesty Germany literally said, we will not be covering this report. So I guess you're wrong and I'm right once again. Maybe you should have been in here five minutes ago. This is a violation of Nets DG, depending on like who is... Uh, depending on who's doing the fucking uh, uh, testing of what is deemed anti-Semitic. Yeah, you literally, Amnesty Germany literally came out and said, we're not going to be discussing this report because uh, it's not, you know, we can't do that. We're not allowed to. Dude, please, American Jews here in Israel are some of the most reactionaries ever. Most of them are from Florida, man. I wish I had a Jewish friend from Florida who told him that I'm better off because they came here. Imagine if I said that to a black person in the US. Wait, first of all, uh, yeah, I know. I know that like, <laughs> dude, what do you mean? American uh, Jews that go to Israel are, of course, there's, they're going to be fucking reactionary. What are you talking about? Like, yeah, they literally ride or die so hard. They decided to fucking go and live in Israel. Half of those, half of those motherfuckers go and live in settlements, dude. What do you mean? Like there are so many people that literally just leave America to go to Israel to not even live in like the occupied uh, state, the occupied Israeli territories but instead, they just like take it one step further and literally uh, are, are like personal colonizers, dude. On the settlement side. Yeah, no shit. But that doesn't mean that, that we, what you're talking about is like Americans that, you know, go and do settlement uh, terrorism or settler terrorism in like occupied Palestinian territories. Being radicalized by what we're talking about is like American Jews. Uh, American Jews are... are uh, definitely conflicted on this and a lot more open-minded to Israel being an apartheid state, especially when they're young, especially younger American Jews are a lot more open-minded to recognizing uh, the Israeli state as a, a corrupt and incredibly violent uh, government than, um, than the older, more reactionary uh, American Jews are. <sighs> Anyway, let's continue. Palestinians live there too. They were there before Israel was established. But, as we will explain, they've been trapped for decades in a system that treats them as a lesser, non-Jewish racial group. 
Before Israel was established in 1948, Palestinians comprised most of the population, around 70%. Here, oh, here, here, this is important to see. Okay, there it is. So, Jewish settlements uh, right here, and then Palestinian land before 1948. Uh, before Nakba, we got 70% uh, of the population is, is, is uh, Palestinian. And owned the vast majority of private land. Anyway, I think there's blood here. About 90% in what was British Mandate Palestine. Jews, many of whom had... Wait, what the fuck? He was moments at 3.30. Oh, okay. That's why I was like... Emigrated from Europe, comprised around 30% of the population. And they and Jewish institutions owned about 6.5% of the land. The port of Haifa in Palestine lies shattered by bombs and strewn with dead. In the course of establishing Israel as a Jewish state in 19... On? International dead bodies, one dead body... Okay. In 1948, Israeli authorities acted to turn the situation on its head and were responsible for the mass expulsion of Palestinians and the destruction of hundreds of villages, forcing around 800,000 Palestinians out of their homes and lands. Thousands of Palestinians and Jews were killed in the context of attacks on civilians during this conflict. Today, there are around 6 million Palestinian refugees who Israel denies the right to return to their homes. After the 1967 war, Israel occupied the Palestinian territories of the West Bank, including East Jerusalem and Gaza. Israel's brutal military rule coupled with the establishment and expansion of illegal Jewish settlements, has coerced Palestinians into enclaves, creating further fragmentation and segregation. The objective? Maintain Jewish-Israeli hegemony and maximize control of land. In the city of Jerusalem, the Israeli official policy is to maintain at least a 60% Jewish majority. This is like, this is the stated goal, by the way. Like, none of this is like, oh, it's a conspiracy, it's fake. Especially if you, like, talk to Israelis, or especially if you live in Israel, like, straight up, this is how, it's not a secret. It's, like, very openly the, the declaration of the state to do this. It's just what it is. It's very public. Obviously, in America, the American side of, of IDF agitprop routinely brushes past this stuff, because they don't want the Americans to also recognize that this is like incredibly fucking violent and just an ethno state. Like this is just fascism. Okay. Is there an argument to be made that America is an apartheid state in regards to its relegation of native Americans on to favorable, unfavorable lands? I guess maybe, I mean, America is a genocidal state, but even America doesn't have fucking racial uh, diversity quotas. Like, <laughs> Where they're like, what we have declared to be uh, white Anglo-Saxon Protestants have to make up, comprise 60% of this territory. Even America, which is a white supremacist country, as we know, and we have talked about, does not have this, okay? Like, Native Americans are still allowed to go wherever they want. Native Americans, like, are given, you know, territories, and it's not great. And it's certainly, they are victims of genocide, right? And land has been stolen from them. But like, Three months the treatment, I've talked about this before, like the treatment of Palestinians, uh, the treatment of Palestinians as a whole by the state of Israel is, is incomprehensible. Like it is, it is unfathomable. It is incomprehensible. It's just active apartheid uh, uh, occupying force. One of the, you know, most powerful fucking militaries like, Redlining is nothing in comparison to what fucking Palestinians experience is what I'm trying to say. And that isn't to say redlining is not uh, significant, okay? That's crazy. Like modern day, modern day versions of white supremacy in America, right, are damaging, devastating, horrible. Talk about it all the time. Redlining is, is devastating. It's, it's, it's terrible. Right? It's theft of wealth from uh, black people. It's like denying opportunities to black people so they can also coexist uh, in a capitalist organization of the economy. Gerrymandering, all the shit. It does not matter. 
has flex. Like, we talk about how the American state has bombed entire city blocks where black people live, okay? Like in 1985 with the move bombing. We talk about the Oklahoma, uh, the, the famous, like, Tulsa race massacre, right? Where uh, the state turned a blind eye to paramilitaries, white, na white supremacists, like, straight up fucking firebombing an entire city block, uh, Black Wall Street. That's a daily part of existence if you're living in fucking Gaza. Like, that's literally just your life all the time. Okay? Your life all the time in Gaza. It is the world's largest open-air prison. Like, there's no redlining. Like, what we are talking about as far as, like, a potential one-state solution in Palestine where Palestinians and Israelis can coexist is literally... Like redlining and everything that we talk about with respect to like how black people are treated, like the Flint water crisis, that is a step up for Palestinians. You understand? Like Palestinians wish they could be living in circumstances like that. Like they're not in that situation yet. Anyways, continue. If you've always felt a deep yearning for Jerusalem, now is a once in a lifetime opportunity, not only to stand within its gates, but also to build the home of your dreams. Okay, Israeli occupation is wrong, but what's the next step here? People live there and they have to live somewhere. It doesn't matter if they're Israeli, Israeli or Palestinian. Give us an opinion to rally for. Okay, I've said this before. First of all, cutting aid. Like, immediately cutting aid to Israel. Like, we, we give billions of fucking dollars. Okay, my man said Israeli. We have a profound amount of influence over Israel, okay? And vice versa, but we have a profound amount of uh, influence over what happens in Israel like what Israel is doing. We have an incredible amount of, of negotiating power. Sorry, what was the point of Native American comparison? I don't know. Someone brought it up. Potawatomi trail, tra trail of death. Look it up. No, no, no. I, I mean, I'm not, dude, I'm not a fucking genocide denier. I do think that Native Americans were, were genocided. I think that's, you know, that already I, I've talked about it a million times. Um, Stopping aid will never happen. Israel is the main Western destabilizing force in the Middle East. I mean, sure. Palestinian children are regularly kidnapped in the middle of the night. My cousins have been arrested for months at a time for no reason. They'll literally tear your family apart and physically destroy your home. Zero justice will come. Yeah. So, I mean, we talked about this last time when, uh, when Israel was doing the fucking cutting of the tall trees a little bit. Uh, when, no, they call it what? Trimming the, trimming the front yard. I think that's what they call it when they bomb the fuck out of Gaza. You know, just the purge, just to, you know, slap it, slap the Palestinians around further in their original, uh, in their horrific state uh, that they're in already. Yeah, that's what it's called. It's called the, 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 the Israeli term for it is called mowing the lawn. No, cutting the tall grass is from uh, the Rwandan genocide. Uh, that's not what I'm talking about. This is, uh, we're, we're talking about fucking uh, mowing the lawn. That's what they call it. Or mowing the grass. No one in Israel calls it mowing the lawn. Stop the fake news. Okay, first of all, it, it is deeply, deeply frustrating, okay? It's deeply... Fr oh, okay, cutting aid won't stop shit. Okay, keep doing genocide then. Keep doing fucking genocide. No one in Israel thinks that settler terrorism is a good thing. Maybe except for the radical right Ben Gwir. Get the fuck out of here, dude. Settlements have now become the official position of the government. You're fucking wrong on that. Cutting the aid won't do shit. We're, we're going to keep fucking doing fascism. Okay, sick. Got it. Nice. Nice of you to just fucking say, oh, Israel is, is more powerful than just like American aid. We'll just keep doing fucking uh, a genocide regardless. And then no one in Israel calls it mowing the lawn. Stop the fake news is also fucking bullshit. Okay, here it is. Maybe you don't call it that, but it doesn't matter. That's the name of the tactic is mowing the grass. Okay. Just like mowing your front lawn, this is constant hard work. David M. Weinberg of the Jerusalem Institute for Strategy and Security wrote for the Jerusalem Post this week, if you fail to do so, weeds grow wild and snakes begin to slither around the bush. It's not the first time that they fucking used it, by the way. It's like, a, it's like an actual fucking strategy. It's not about national security. It's about fucking, uh, it, it's literally about making the everyday existence of Palestinians horrible, okay? That's it. There's a French news YouTuber that took an image from your Twitter as a source for the Canadian protestation. Nice crossover, lol. Yeah, 
short term applied Hamas euphemistically called mowing the grass is really working. Here's a rundown of the past present. Gaza invasion is about mowing the grass. So it's developed a new version of his long held threat management strategy, which is often called mowing the grass is a pretty creepy term as it's implies uh, periodically killing people is the same as keeping your long room. But that's the basic analogy. Hamas like grass can't disappear, but it can regularly be cut down to size. And like mowing the grass, it is implied that this is a routine that will be continued forever. Anyway, I, it's just like, doesn't matter. This is like such a fucking, again, I am now once again, instead of covering the new thing that we are supposed to be covering, which is the Amnesty, the, the Amnesty International report of Amnesty International UK calling Israel an apartheid state. We've moved on from that to like idiotic semantics arguments about mowing the fucking grass. Okay. As though, even if they didn't call it mowing the uh, grass, as though uh, that would make it somehow, uh, I don't know, more humane. No, it doesn't. It's still fucked up. It's still completely unjustifiable. Okay. It's such a stupid fucking deflection away from the main subject here, okay? That Israel, the Israeli government, routinely, as a part of its national strategy, and as a part of its existence, like, since its inception, has regularly and systematically destroyed the lives and livelihoods of Palestinians that originally lived on this land. Instead of coexisting with them, this is what Israel did and continues to do. So where do all the Palestinians live now? 3.4 million live outside of Israel in the occupied territories, mainly in refugee camps in neighboring countries. 2.5 million Palestinians live in Israel and East Jerusalem, restricted to enclaves that make up around 3% of the entire area. 3 million Palestinians live in the occupied West Bank, but are only allowed to access 40% of the land to live and work the rest of the area is for the Jewish Israeli settlers only. Two million. For the record, that's a real light way of describing what is going on here. Okay. Not only that, not only that, but Israel regularly, like Israeli forces will regularly set up checkpoints to engage in what is known as collective punishment for the crimes like of children fucking throwing rocks at ongoing cars or whatever. And they will justify it and they do it like. They do it literally on purpose. They're like, we are doing this as collective punishment and to, you know, fuck people's lives up. Okay. Just like the settlements are strategically positioned in an effort to completely shut off areas where Palestinians live from the rest of the areas where Palestinians live. Because if you have Israelis living in a settlement in the middle of occupied Palestinian territory, then you have to fucking, you know, build checkpoints on those roads and then build separate roads for the Israelis to be able to drive on. So imagine like your neighborhood, imagine your neighborhood. Uh, and all of a sudden, like this big dick fucking military force comes in that despises you, that is openly and actively trying to fucking murder you. But in the, in the most like in the most torturous way possible. They're not trying to murder you. They're trying to choke you out slowly but surely, year over year over year over year. Sometimes they just straight up bomb you, but other times they're just like building fucking buildings next door. And then all of a sudden, before you know it, now you got fucking tanks and a police uh, and, a, and a paramilitary state uh, telling you, get the fuck out of here. Your backyard is now no longer yours. In some instances, your house is no longer yours. Your house now belongs to some uh, American dude that fucking lived in Brooklyn who decided to travel to, uh, to, to occupied Palestinian territory and decided your fucking backyard, your living room is his now. What are you going to do? Nothing. Because the police force is not protecting you. You don't have anything. You don't have no, no protection whatsoever. You have no protection. You have no rights. What the fuck soever. Some instances, if you travel outside of the occupied territory, you are not even allowed back in. Okay? You got nothing. Yeah, like, ya the, like Jacob. Jakub. The guy from Brooklyn who's like, yeah, I, I live here now. This is my place. Who, who then tells you, if I don't do it, someone else will. Someone else will take your fucking place. Oh, here, this is the collective punishment thing I was talking about. I, I tweeted this before, but here, here, watch this. This is just one of the, this is one of the more nefarious and lightest forms of punishment, but it's, it's so routine. I want to watch this video. I want to show this video to you, just like I want to show you the top of the hour ad break for you to you beforehand, because it's so fucking incredibly routine. 
This is just the normal part of the policy. Just a way to fucking fuck over the Palestinian people that live on territories that they, that uh, these Israelis do not even belong on. Okay, the the limited amount of fucking territories that they have. Yes, that's right. I'm I have to fucking serve you an ad, so I'm doing it in the middle of discussing something very important, very serious, very near and dear to me uh, personally. But uh, it is what it is. Okay, let's continue on with this. It says, what is the purpose of this checkpoint? הרגשה של אוקיי, הם מכירים לעבודה שלהם בבוקר, אנחנו באמת מקשים להם על היום יום. We aim to make their lives difficult. Like, we're doing this because we want to hurt them. We want to, we want to do, he, he literally said it. He said, we are doing this because we want to do collective punishment. Okay? We want to terrorize this village because some of the fucking little kids, because some of the little kids threw, like, pebbles, rocks at a fucking car. הם מודעים לזה, הם גם... הם גם בסופו של דבר מודעים למה שקורה עם הילדים הקטנים, הם נגד זה, הם לא רוצים שזה יהיה את זה, לא רוצים את הזריקת האבנים האלה, ובסופו של דבר הם מבינים את הסיטואציה, הם מבינים את המצב המורכב. בסופו של דבר, כל העניין הוא... אז בעצם זה סוג של ענישה קולקטיבית על הכפר. לגמרי, ענישה קולקטיבית של הכפר. אקזקטלי. הוא אומר, כן, זה קולקטיב פונשמנט, זה מה שאנחנו כאן לעשות. בשביל שהלחץ של המבוגרים, זקני השבט נקרא להם ככה, <laughs> That's just an excuse. If it wasn't for that, they would make other shit up. Yeah, of course, of course, of course, of course. I know. I'm just stating that, like, the excuse in the circumstance to do collective punishment against an entire village of Palestinians who have been robbed of their fucking rights, their liberties for so many fucking years, and their land is literally just is 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 just straight up fucking. Yeah, we're doing uh we're doing this because of uh, pebbles. אוקיי, וזה משהו שהוא נראה לכם הגיוני, כאילו להעניש אלף איש בגלל כמה ילדים? זה או זה, או שהפתרונות האחרים הם לא תמיד הכי... יואו, this fucking dude keeps asking this question, I'm gonna lose my fucking mind, dude. What's your solution then? The current situation is fucked up, but what's your made to make stuff better? Make Israel remove every single fucking troop and every single settlement. from occupied Palestinian lands in the short term, okay? Cut aid to Israel in its entirety. Start fucking applying pressure to the Israeli government in the exact same fucking way that we did to South Africa, okay? We already have... We already have the, 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 the footprint. Like, I mean, not footprint. We already have the fucking solution. This already happened in apartheid South Africa, okay? Okay? The blueprint, not footprint. I'm so stupid. God damn it. I already described this to you, but you keep fucking asking this. Like, I don't know why. I don't know why. I asked, you asked earlier, and I told you what, what, what we were supposed to do. What we can do. What we should do. Make Israel be nicer, Saj. Why don't you spend this much time on the Armenian genocide? Hits a little close to home. Dude, you are such a fucking pathetic little shit stain. You know that? Like... The Armenian Genocide is historical fact, okay? It's historical fact that I have admitted and have never fucking taken an anti stance on. Shut the fuck up. The only reason why you're bringing this up on your idiotic fucking sock account is because you think like... Because you, you think this is like a, a, a thing that is going to be a good own, okay? You fucking piece of shit. I'm not a denier of the Armenian genocide, but that is not a fucking counter anyway. Like, you can't turn around and be like, Paha, this guy denies the Armenian genocide. So, okay. Let's say I did. Then what? Does that make it okay to fucking do apartheid state shit in Israel? Is that, is, is that all, all of a sudden magically okay? It's so stupid. I don't. But even if I fucking did, it wouldn't... make what Israel's doing justifiable. Like, we're talking about ongoing shit. 
right now. Ongoing issues right now. And you're like, why don't you fucking repeat your take that you have uh, repeated a million times over to uh, moronic baboon brain dickheads? Okay. By the way, I don't defend the current actions of the Turkish government either. I don't know if you don't realize that. And what I urge people who live in Israel, or what I urge American Jews, okay, that have some kind of connection back to Israel by way of their relatives or whatever, to also do the same. Don't fucking defend it. You don't have to. Like, you don't have to do that. <laughs> So what he's saying is he's embellishing obviously when he says you control the air we breathe, but it's right. They literally control their water. They control everything. They control every part of their lives, okay? Every part of Palestinian lives are completely controlled by a violent, hostile, apartheid state that has occupied their lands. It is so fucking unjustifiable. They control the electricity. They control the fucking water. They will not let them build new wells, okay? They control all their trade. They control all their waste. They control every facet of Palestinian existence. And they build separate fucking streets for them to drive their shitty cars on. So it's not an exaggeration when someone uh, says they control the very air we breathe. Okay? Specify Gaza and West Bank, dude. What do you mean specify Gaza and West Bank? Where the fuck do you think the Palestinians live? What, what, are, you, what are you saying? They do, this in, they do this in the West Bank, which is supposed to be the fucking part that is like literally livable and habitable. Okay? They do that in the parts where Palestinians have historically lived, just like the rest of Israel, of course, where Palestinians historically lived. But they do that in the area that they're not supposed to be touching, supposedly. It's the nice part of town, okay? That's where the Palestinians are supposed to live freely, not West Bank, where they're engaging in the collective punishment for the crimes of whatever the fuck they've declared is a, is a criminal act to just literally fucking bomb endlessly. No, I don't mean Gaza, you fucking idiot. This part of the conversation is on the West Bank. What the fuck are you talking about? If you're in Gaza, you don't get to... If you live in Gaza... You don't get to talk to the IDF. The IDF doesn't like control your life via checkpoints. You're just fucking, you're in, you're in a, in a captive hostile fucking prison state. Okay. There is no, when I say separate roads, I'm talking about the nice part of town, motherfucker. I'm not talking about fucking Gaza. You're just in Gaza. You're just ducking missiles. That's it. That's all you're doing. Gaza is a open air prison. You misspoke when you said they bombed West Bank when you met Gaza. Oh, okay. Sorry. Including literally the fucking, uh, you know, building that, uh, that the, the, the Associated Press was like operating out of. It's always funny whenever people are like, dude, I can't believe that journalist went to speak with Hamas. Like, isn't she afraid of Hamas? It's like, no, dumbass. If I ever went to fucking Palestine, okay, I would be more worried about getting blown to fucking bits while in the process of trying to communicate with someone that uh, would be like a, a government representative of whatever semblance of a fucking government uh, Gaza has, okay? I would be way more afraid of the idea of blowing my shit off, okay? Rather than the other way around. Do you plan on talking about what's happening in Yemen recently in the past five years even? Dude, what is wrong with you? I have, I have talked about it. What the fuck do you want, man? Like, we're currently talking about one fucking atrocity that the American state and Israel is responsible for. Meanwhile, you're like, dude, why aren't you talking about the other atrocity that uh, the American state and Saudi Arabia is responsible for? Jesus Christ, dude. 
stuff more. A bit off topic, but have you talked about what's happening in Yemen? UAE is bombing Yemen with support from Israel. I'm not saying that the Houthi militia is good, but both sides are fucked. Yeah, no, there's no both siding in, in that situation. Anyway, let's continue. Jewish Israeli settlers only. Two million are trapped in the Gaza Strip, one of the most densely populated areas in the world. Fragmentation of the Palestinian society and the dispossession of their lands are key pillars of Israel's apartheid system to maintain domination and control. But there's more. On. The unequal structure of nationality and status, restrictions on freedom of On. movement, use of military rule, denial of right to political participation or the right to peaceful protest and cruel separation of families all add to the complex system that we see today. The world in general hasn't woken up to the fact that there is an entrenched system of oppression against Palestinians across Israel and the occupied Palestinian territories, wherever they may live, by the Israeli state. It's a system that's been put in place and maintained for decades. And it's that system that is the root cause of so many of the violations, the misery and the suffering that millions of Palestinians face on a daily basis. One way to understand this segregation and oppression is to look at the ID system. Jewish Israelis have only one ID card with a status that grants them the rights to live almost anywhere they wish in the country. They can move freely without Nothing about any missile against Israel from the Hamas. Yes, bro. I know, bro. What the fuck? Why aren't they talking about that, bro? You're right, bro. What the fuck, bro? Talk about the missile fired from ha Hamas, bro. I don't know. Maybe they're talking about fucking West Bank right now. You know? Also, remember, this is... Oh, we're, we're here. Oh, let's go, dude. Let's fucking go. Let's go. I, I was expecting this. I don't know how the fuck we haven't gotten to that point yet. Dog. One, the Israeli state and the Israeli intelligence agencies are responsible for Hamas, okay? 100,000%. Palestinians have nothing, dumbass. They have nothing. Who the fuck do they go to? The Palestinian authorities are fucking dogs, okay? Straight up. The West Bank Palestinian authorities, dogs. Literally, like last week, uh, the, the dude came out and was like, uh, the Israel belongs to the Jews. <laughs> like fucking insane. Okay? Seven months and you've turned me into a social... They hate him. You got me addicted to cooking and now... They I'm hate him. TikTok. Understandable. Israel personally helped uh, create Hamas too. Yes, exactly. As a counterweight to the socialist Palestinian, uh, to the socialist Palestine, because socialist Palestine would be too strong for Israel to oppress, and also uh, was was getting you know was anti-communist uh, Israel. Uh, Israel's like anti-communist stance in that circumstance was you know good. Uh, would offer international support. Good way to destabilize the popular uh, movements. How did they make that missile? Hmm, I wonder how. I truly do. Yeah, by literally fucking parsing, putting together whatever the fuck Israel is uh, used uh, back to lob it, okay? With fertilizer. It's so stupid, dude. Israel has Iron Dome, okay? Those Palestinian missiles are, are bullshit. There's nothing. It is nothing. It's not a real thing. If it wasn't for the missiles, then sometimes they use kites and they will say, Oh, well, these kites have like, uh, uh, this is a kite that they flew over a field and, and dropped down into, uh, into our field. Then that's the reason why we have to bomb them. Just like the reason why they are doing collective punishment on that village is not a serious reason. It's because, you know, some fucking kids threw rocks at a car passing by. Okay. It's just, it's just trying to justify the retaliation. And the reality is, like, they're only doing it for fucking PR. Because if, if you go to Israel, if you listen to what the Israeli sentiment is, then they don't, they're, they don't need that justification anyway. They just fucking, you know, they're like, yeah, rip them apart. ...access to healthcare and vast resources. Palestinians, on the other hand, have four types of ID cards, if any at all. The kind of ID card you are given determines the level of rights you can enjoy and controls where you can go and what you can do. 
if you hold a green card, you are subject to military rule. And if you have a green card with a Gaza address, it means you're trapped in a 365 km square open air prison under Israeli military blockade in place since 2007. Israel controls what goes in and what goes out from children's toys to medical supplies. 90% of the people have no access to safe drinking water, 47% are unemployed, 56% live in poverty. Palestinians with a Gaza ID are forbidden from going to Jerusalem in the West Bank, even if they have family there. Some people in the West Bank are considered to live there illegally and can be deported immediately to Gaza if found by the army, even if they have been in the West Bank for decades. Whereas, if you hold a green card which has a West Bank address, then you live here. Dog. This green card means you can live within specific enclaves surrounded by illegal- What a fucking dog, dude. As a Palestinian peace activist and the founder of the Jerusalem-based Palestinian Human Rights Monitoring Group, I'm here to set the record state, Israel is not an apartheid state. What a fucking dog, dude. Like, straight up. Straight up, dude. I am a Palestinian peace activist and the founder of Jerusalem-based Palestinian Human Rights Group. Hashtag BDS is BS. What a fucking piece of shit. Like, fuck this guy. There you go. For the record, things are changing for the better for Palestinians, okay? Which Palestinians fucking know this already. This is unfathomable, okay? Five years ago, ten years ago. This shit is literally unfathomable. I have never in my entire life... Never ever seen like this level of not mainstream support, but even this discussion. Okay, this discussion would immediately be like, "Oh, you're anti-Semitic. Fuck off. Move on." I've been talking about shit like this for many, many years. Okay, there are plenty of people who have talked about shit like this for many, many years. The situation uh, uh, in in Palestine, Amnesty International writing a fucking report that says Israel is an apartheid state is something that is so fucking beyond my realm of comprehension it is crazy okay it's absolutely crazy like there are high profile there are high profile fucking celebrities in america openly fucking uh, declaring that they are uh, siding with palestine and, and and the liberation of palestinians that sort of stuff is like unironically uh that that sort of stuff is like just impossible to comprehend so so it is, it is actually uh, strange to see. I mean, the world size of Palestine is mostly Western countries. At Amnesty International, uh, Israeli apartheid report demonstrates a seismic shift in the human rights world of addressing the oppression of Palestinian people in their entirety. Um, not just the West Bank and Gaza, using decades of research and testimonies to live Palestinian realities, the report represents a nuanced and detailed analysis of the Israeli regime's system of apartheid with an international law framework. The significance of an organization such as Amnesty with a global membership of millions producing this kind of analysis is big, but the international law framework still falls short and its provisions for colonialism slash settler and settler colonialism are limited. Omitting the context of ongoing settler colonialism in Palestine has serious consequences. It removes the concept of decolonization from the end game. As Lana Tatur once uh, eloquently wrote, by confining ourselves to international law, we risk, taking, we risk talking only about racial domination and ignoring colonial domination. Apartheid thus is boiled down to a question of equality and not one of decolonial liberation. This critique is not meant to detract from the rigorous and brave work done by the Amnesty staff. Bravo. Rather, it is to urge us not to remain limited by the confines of international law when imagining our future and collective liberation. So here's the reality, okay? Reports like this come out. Reports like this come out. And then even if people, oh, that Bassam aid guy is on Prager U, of course he is, dude. A Palestinian explains Hamas. Fucking piece of shit, dude. I swear to God. Exactly. It's like that Yanmi uh, a woman that uh, actually fucking does agitprop against like North Korea. Yanmi Park. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> it's like saying Blair White is a trans activist. You see the Elon playing kid? Why? What, what new thing happened, Poke? I have seen it. Anyway, wait, hold on. Let's, let's continue uh, with this conversation. So there, this is important. Now, what must follow through in the aftermath of this, though, which is important, it's, a, it's definitely a change of pace, it's definitely a change in the conversation, a change in the narrative, and it's unique, and it's very cool that it's happening, okay? But what is also important to note here is that, uh, ultimately, America is going to be able to block everything and anything, you know? 
how vital was the BLM movement? And even if you hate them, leftist Twitter in this? What? No. Leftist Twitter and the BLM movement is nothing, dude. No. Like the BLM movement it, about like what you, you mean the organization? No. Leftist Twitter is nothing either. Anyway, let's continue. Israeli settlements. And there's a separation wall and fences built around you since 2002, which Palestinians call the apartheid wall. It's eight meters high in places and 700 kilometers long. That's twice the height of the Berlin Wall and more than four times its length. 80% of it is built inside the West Bank, occupying even more Palestinian land. There are separate roads for Israelis and Palestinians. Hundreds of checkpoints scattered throughout, not to mention the 54 years of occupation, which has devastated the lives of millions of Palestinians. Palestinians with a West Bank ID can travel to Gaza or East Jerusalem, but only if they receive a permit from the military to do so. This blue ID is for Palestinians in East Jerusalem. They can travel to the occupied West Bank as well as to Israel, but they are not citizens of Israel. They have only been granted a residency status. This means that they cannot vote in Israeli national elections, and if they leave East Jerusalem for too long, for example, to study or work yep. abroad or in other parts of Can't the come back. West Bank, their residency is revoked. Can't come back. So Can't see your return. family. Can't come back. Since 1967, Israel has revoked the residency status of more than 14,600 Palestinians from East Jerusalem. It's literally a South African Dompus. Palestinian citizens of Israel. They have been through it all. They are the group that remained in Israel despite the ethnic cleansing in 1948. They lived under Israeli military rule that applied only to them and not Jewish Israelis for 18 years between 1948 and 1966. They were made citizens but can never become nationals and enjoy equality unless they become Jewish, which the law prohibits. They are the only Palestinians who can run and vote in Israeli elections and they can move relatively freely but the inequality against them was never dismantled and they face daily institutional discrimination, including as Palestinians living in Israel that have like Israeli status are like, is the final stage, like is the best stage that you can get to. Obviously there's still a shitload of oppression that they are faced as well. There's like literally racialized violence against them that they're subjected to. Their storefronts are fucking broken into every time like, uh, you know, every time Israel decides to mow the lawn and their treatment is, is horrifying still, except that's the fucking best you are going to get for the time being in the short term. Like that's a situation that would be literally like that would be a situation where people would be like, OK, we're we're we have made tangible and serious. Uh, uh, we have made tangible and serious progress in Palestinian liberation. Like being secondhand citizens under an Israeli nation state would still be preferable right now to the the uh, situation that they're subjected to. Well, you are so wrong. This man says, "I need to see where where do you go? Why'd you ban him?" Oh, he just said, "Too bad, Wawa." Israel is pro vax, bro. Jew York. Ew. Ugh. As members of parliament. And if this complex ID system wasn't enough to segregate the Palestinian community, in 2002, Israel introduced a law that prohibits family unification. That's right, denying Palestinians the right to live with their loved ones if their ID cards are different. And this woman is one of thousands of Palestinians who Israel will not issue any ID card. She can't travel, can't hug her family, only see them meters away across the border. Putting down roots, the family home. These are crucial parts of what make a strong community. How are you anti-Semitic by the Zionists? Are you crazy? Do you know how many fucking anti-Semitic Zionists exist? Bibi Netanyahu could be considered an anti-Semitic Zionist. He literally did Holocaust revisionism. Like famously did Holocaust revisionism. There are so many fucking anti-Semitic Zionists, dude. Are you, are you insane? Look at like Victor Orban and all of Yair Bolsonaro. They are all allies of the state of Israel that are uh, that have done like actual anti-Semitic conspiracies and anti-Semitic agitprop while running for fucking office. Look at most Republicans. Look at the evangelicals. The point is the allegiance that evangelicals have with uh, with Zionism or with Israel is is very understandable. It's just like. They don't want Jews to be here. 
Okay, they're like, yeah, you guys run the world. Just don't do it here. Just do it in Israel. I don't give a fuck. Like, that's the point. Okay. And that's one that Bibi Netanyahu has benefited from for a very long time as well. That's why he doesn't have a fucking problem dealing with like openly anti-Semitic people and having them uh, be important strategic allies. Because that way he can pump up the fucking fear and say, look, the rest of the world hates you. The rest of the world hates you. You will never be able to coexist there. Come back to Israel. Okay. How do the Jews run the world? They do not run the world. I'm saying that's what fucking anti-Semitic conspiracy theorists that are still uh, uh, pro-Israel say. It's why black separatists and white supremacists kind of get along. They both want the same end goal, but rooted in very different ideology. I guess, kind of. To make sure Palestinian communities can't develop any further, Israel has made it almost impossible to grant building permits for Palestinian homes. So, Palestinians live in a catch-22 situation. In order to have shelter, or develop their communities, they must build without a permit. And if they do so, Israel can demolish the structures on the basis that it was built without a permit. Yeah, that's why I said Amnesty International is surprising for stating this. Does Amnesty oppose Israel's military occupation of Palestine? Amnesty hasn't taken a position on the occupation. Our focus has been on the Israeli government's obligations as the occupying power under international law, but Amnesty has taken no position on the occupation itself. So remember that. That's the reason why I was like, I'm surprised that like a NGO would ever uh, openly state that it's a fucking apartheid state. But it's kind of cool to see them actually say it. It's kind of cool to see them say it because even this is new. Look, there are Palestinians in my chat right now. Okay. Normally, awareness is something that I frown upon, right? Like, oh, aver awareness without any sort of fucking direct action. Like, what the fuck is that? It's nothing, right? But for... For the lives of millions of Palestinians living in diaspora, or for the lives of millions of Palestinians living under occupation, awareness and like literally coverage from a positive point of view is unique. Okay? That itself is unique in comparison to the coverage that you are that you're used to if you're Palestinian. The coverage that you're used to if you're Palestinian is you're a terrorist, fuck off, die. Okay? Like, never a mention of, of what the lived experience of Palestinians uh, is. Never a mention of any of that. So this is, like, a unique thing, and it's actually a step towards progress. It's wild to consider. The brain rot saved me. Right now, there are over 150,000 Palestinians currently living under the constant threat of demolition Black separatism is absolutely not compatible to white com comparable to white supremacy colonizer imperialist Vosheites can fucking rot. Okay, listen, dude. Look, there are varying degrees of black nationalism, pan-African black nationalism, pan-Africanism, and then there is also, you know, black separatism, okay? I'm not going to have this fucking conversation. I'm not going to have this conversation in, in the chat like this while we are having a conversation about Israel uh, being an apartheid state. Okay? Shut the fuck up. But ultimately, I do not agree with black separatism. Okay? I don't. And probably you don't either. The reason why you're upset is because you are upset about the, the comparison to white supremacy. Of course, black separatism comes from uh, a, a place of subjugation, okay? It's wrong, but it's, of course, not the same as the dominant power pushing for nationalistic uh, points of view or pushing for further reinforcing their dominance that they have over uh, minority groups and marginalized people that are, they've already marginalized. But it doesn't change the reality. It is still fucking wrong, okay? It is not good. Forced eviction. Many of them for the second or third time. In the West Bank, an average of 18 Palestinian structures were demolished every week in 2020. The same year, Israel issued 1,094 building permits for Jewish applicants. Like, I remember a time when, like, 20 years ago, the Israeli state's position on settler terrorism was like, oh, it's bad. Like, oh, we shouldn't do that. And they would look the other way, right? When, when Palestinian land was being fucking destroyed, right? And, and, and settler uh, colonialism was occurring, but they would at least like turn the other cheek, right? Now it's done. They're literally selling land. They're selling Palestinian land on Israeli television and American television too, to be like, come on, come, come live in, uh, come, come live in occupied Palestinian territory. Okay. 
that it, we've completely moved on from them even like symbolically stating maybe not the best thing to do it's maybe not the best thing to do yeah marketed as bedroom communities <laughs> and only one for a Palestinian. This goes back to the heart of the issue. To maintain the state's character as Jewish, Israel systematically disadvantages Palestinians while privileging Jewish Israelis. This racist privilege has been enshrined in laws, policies, and practices, and it enables Palestinian resources to be taken in order to economically benefit Jewish Israeli citizens. The system of apartheid is the Israeli state's oppression and domination of Palestinians on a daily basis. It's the, the laws, the policies, and the practices that it puts in place and then implements to control Palestinians' daily lives. And then the, the crimes of apartheid. The crimes of apartheid are those acts, those violations, those patterns of violations yeah. that Israel is committing to create and then maintain that system of apartheid. Amnesty International and other rights organizations have been documenting patterns of human rights violations and international crimes for decades. These are the most visible and violent part of this system. At the end of May 2020, 4,236 Palestinians were held in Israeli prisons, and 352 including two children, were held without charge or trial. Between Hold on. Oh, okay. Between September 2000 and February 2017, Israeli forces killed 4,868 Palestinians in the occupied Palestinian territories, including 1,793 children, outside the context of armed conflict. And Amnesty International is not aware of any case in which an Israeli soldier has been convicted of willfully causing the death of a Palestinian in the occupied territories since 1987. God this imbalance of rights, here. justice look at that. and accountability oh, is never more clear than when a Jewish... Look at that! Look at that video. Those are children, bro. Those are fucking kids. ...imbalance of rights, justice and accountability is never more clear than when... By the way, greatest democracy, if not the only democracy in the Middle East. Remember, isn't that, as always funny when they're just like, yo, fucking, you know, greatest democracy in the Middle East, greatest democracy in the Middle East. This is what they're doing. They do it for vaccine apartheid. They do it in medical apartheid. They do it in every fucking facet of Palestinian existence and pa Palestinian lives. That's why I'm telling you, like, chat, you can't compare this to anything happening in America. Like, you can compare this to uh, historical atrocities, and by the way, that's unacceptable too. Where the fuck is that guy who said fuck the Jews or whatever? I mean, Mod's already clapped his ass. Completely unacceptable. Completely fucking unacceptable. Piece of shit. Kind of looks like if people resisted gentrification, dude, you are... Stop. 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 That's not gentrification, man. Shut the fuck up. Dude, that you cannot... That is such a devastatingly stupid comparison, dude. Oh my fucking God, dude. Americans have no way of comprehending a world outside of their fucking, like, limited scope, dude. Holy shit. These aren't Palestinians being priced out of their fucking neighborhoods with, like, a Whole Foods popping up, dude. What the fuck are you talking about? I just, you just watched kids get fucking flashbanged uh, by a, a military troop, Okay. Like, just a bunch of kids, and you're like, yo, this is pretty similar to gentrification, like, when fucking... Like, that's not acceptable either. Don't understand. Uh, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. That's why I said, like, this is so much worse than fucking redlining. This is like Tulsa Massacre, but every day, okay? That's what this is. This is Tulsa Massacre and the move bombing com uh, combined, but every day for Palestinians. By the only state that is in that region. When a Jewish Israeli life appears to have more value than a Palestinian's, Israel's apartheid and its cruel and prolonged strategies deliberately disadvantage Palestinians wherever they live. They cannot claim and enjoy equality with Jewish Israelis. Look, everyone can make a difference. Together, we need to speak out 
on behalf of Palestinians, we need to speak about the human rights violations that they are suffering. We need to talk about the apartheid, the system of apartheid to which they have subjected. Because by campaigning together, putting pressure on the Israeli state, we can have this system of apartheid dismantled. Join us, join our campaign. Everyone has the power to make a difference. And obviously, like one of the one of the movements against uh, this, all the things that you saw is boycott, divest and sanctions. I love I love the Democrats fucking coming out in arms against this report, by the way. So fucking sick. Absolutely sick, dude. So tight. So fucking tight. I mean, Benny Gantz is like. Like he, he literally flexed war crimes on his fucking campaign video. So if you want to get a better understanding of like where Israelis stand, that was supposed to be the liberal version. You know what I mean? That was supposed to be the more tolerant, more liberal, more progressive guy in uh, uh, running against Bibi Netanyahu. Okay. So remember like a military commander who literally put his war crimes the Israeli government just spends so much money on digital propaganda. It's very hard to have a different take. Yeah. And the funniest part is like, if you fucking show shit like this, if you show shit like this, if you show uh, what's going on, uh, or, or if you cover it in this way, it turns into, it's just like you're doing anti-Semitism. Anyway. Palestinian over here in my family who still lives there. Hassan is stating facts. Everything is limited from water to general resources. Saying my grandmother... Staying by my grandmother, they limit the hot water every week to two water tanks for the whole house, and it gets cold within a day, so it's cold water the rest of the week. This is one of the millions of human rights violations that Israel has caused, really. Yeah. Anyway. Hey, if you like this video, please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. <laughs>